Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the 9 p.m. English news edition. Here are the headlines. The head of state participates in the work of the 740th session of the General Assembly. Boris Johnson waited hard in the British Parliament. Hello and welcome again. The President of the Republic, His Excellency Ismail Omar Ghele, took part today in this opening ceremony of the 740th session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. Inaugurated by Secretary General Antonio Guterres, this session, whose agenda for the day revolves around topics related to sustainable development objectives. Also today, the United Nations General Assembly is organizing a high-level meeting on the sustainable development of the United Nations. Next Thursday, the United Nations Assembly will hold a high-level dialogue on financing for development in high-level meeting on the elimination of nuclear weapons. On Friday, there will be a high-level meeting to review projects achieved in addressing the priority of small island developing states through the misimplementation of the fast-track process. The Egyptian president and current chairman of the African Union Commission, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, yesterday evening began a difficult mediation exercise between Djibouti and Kenya two countries in the region that convert the seat of a non-permanent member of the Security Council. After almost an hour of head between the three heads of state, the decision fell and we accepted that little. Neither side has made any compromises to the other, not understanding or consensus emerged despite the goodwill of the Egyptian president, said a Djibouti diplomat close to the issue. On this current Arab Union chairman called on Djibouti and Kenya lead us to main fair play. Djibouti and Kenya are the foundation on Djibouti and are the foundation for peace, security, and development in the region. On the margin of the 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly, the President of the Republic met his Red Redouan counterpart, Paul Naval with whom he had one-on-one -on -one meeting. The two leaders have initiated discussion on cooperation between the two countries and ways and means to further strengthen with Paul Kagame. Between President Gale and Paul Kagame, the vote of, for Djibouti as non-permanent member of the United Nations security was also discussed. Djibouti is not alone in waiting this seat on the Security Council. There is also Kenyan complaining for. Senegal's non resident ambassador to Djibouti, His Excellency Baye Mokhtar Dio, paid a courtesy call on Thursday morning, 24 September, to the Prime Minister and Acting Head of Government, Abdul Ghadir Kamil Mohamed. The Senegalese ambassador was accompanied by the Honorary Council of Senegal in Djibouti, Mr. Ali Sek. The Minister of Justice and Penitentiary Affairs in Charge of Human Rights, Mr. Ali Hassan Badon, the advisor of the Prime Minister, Mr. Ali Silai, that participated in this meeting. Mr. Bayem Maktar Diop carried a personal message for President Macky Sall of Senegal to the President of the Republic, Mr. Ismail Margheli. In addition, this visit was an opportunity for Ambassador Bayem Maktar Diop to express his availability to host in order to pave the way for better collaboration between the two countries. And uh, in the same vein of protocol visit, the President of the National Assembly, Mohammed Ali Hummed, welcomed Her Majesty's Ambassador, the Queen of Great Britain, His Excellency Dr. Alistair MacPhail, accompanied for the occasion by the Deputy Ambassador Parliament VIP Lounge on Djibouti side, the Chief of Staff of the Ambassador, President of the Assembly. Moving now on this uh, meeting, the Minister, also in the context of the work, the Minister of Interior, His Excellency Moumin Ahmed Sheikh, accompanied by the Ministry of Trade, Craft and Training, Mr. Hassan Mohamed Ibrahim, his Council, Atei Waiz Buh, the Prefect of the Dikil Region, Mr. Adam Darar Musa, the President of the Regional Council of Dikil, Abdurrahman Yunis, Are, the Chief of Detachment of Dikil, Police Force Commander Daoud Buh, the Commander of the Gendarmerie Zone, Lieutenant Ali Mohammed Musa and the Chief of the Raid Corps, as well as the parliamentarians of the region, visited the Asailasu Prefecture on Tuesday, 24 September 2019. 
Upon his arrival, the Minister of the Interior attended the picket line set up by the police in his honor. Then the Minister of the Interior and his delegation were welcomed by the Deputy Prefect of the Dikil region, Mr. Musa Hamad Ugure, and the customary authorities of the Asa'ila district. The Minister of Health, Mr. Mohamed Warsama Adiri, held a working meeting with the New World Bank representative, Mr. Bobakar Sidi Bari, who was accompanied by several of his staff. Also noteworthy was the presence of the Secretary General of Health, Dr. Salah Bonaita Trab, the main executives of the Department of Health who attended the discussion, which focused on the continuation of two important projects, namely performance-based financing and the DHIS2 platform for the computerization of statistics. In his intervention, the Minister of Health, Mr. Mohamed Wassamidri, immediately thanked the administration of the World Bank for their unwavering and essential support for the development of the health system in the Republic of Djibouti. In this regard, the new representative of the World Bank reaffirmed the availability of the global financial organization to support the Djibouti government's effort in the area of health. And, uh, and now the Minister of Energy in charge of natural resources, His Excellency Mr. Yunis Ali Gedi received Mr. Bubakar Seed Bari, the new World Bank representative in Djibouti on Tuesday, 24 September 2019. This meeting took place in the presence of the Secretary General of the Minister of Energy, Mr. Mohamed Kilab Ais, and Mr. Guled Mohamed, Director of Energy. This meeting was an opportunity for both sides to finalize the long-standing relationship between the Minister of Energy and the World Bank representation, which has grown steadily in recent years. The Minister of Energy in charge of natural resources welcomed the representative to this new position in Djibouti before giving him a brief overview of the completed and ongoing project between the two institutions. The World Bank resident representative in turn thanked the Minister in Energy. And now the Minister of Social Affairs and Solidarity launched the first capacity building training session for social workers in Djibouti yesterday morning, a promising momentum, a dynamic likely to consolidate the skills and achievements of MASS social workers working in this direction in the social field. It must be noted that this training was made possible thanks to the financial support of UNICEF and in partnership with the National Institute of Labor and Social Studies in Tunis. Fidel was frank with the Minister of Social Affairs and Solidarity who did not fail to stress the importance of this training for these social workers. This 12-module certification training aims to enable social workers to acquire new skills in the field of social work CAD, reception and communication techniques, methods, and approach of social service in, in the context and an interview with vulnerable categories, including children. The UNICEF representative also strongly reiterated the importance of this training, which should enable these young participants to discover new tools and techniques aimed to improve the capacity of social workers and also contributing to the success of their mission in their role helping of serving the midst families in order to improve the living condition of our fellow citizens to more particularly the most vulnerable segment of the population with the Ministry of Social Affairs and Solidarity has set up proximity structured social controls in the capital district and in the main towns of interior regions. The Minister of Social Affairs and Solidarity, Mrs. Mona Osman, received this afternoon Ministerial Cabinet, Mrs. Erika Jorgensen, Regional Director of WFP, in courtesy visit during this meeting. The Regional Director of MAP was accompanied by Madam Mutinta Shimoka, WFP Resident Representative in Djibouti. The Minister began by welcoming the Regional Director and thanked him for his, to vi his visit to Djibouti. She then congratulated WFP for her, the effort made in Djibouti, then reviewed the work carried out within the framework of social protection, in particular the money transfer program and the strengthening of collaboration. Finally, the minister granted to the, that the Djibouti government will, also, will always support the action of this organization. In addition, the representative will then go tomorrow to the social counters to meet with social workers and local communities. 
The Human Rights Commission collaboration with the Minister of Justice and Penitentiary Affairs responsible for human rights in the United Nations of Djibouti organized a workshop on the implementation of the recommendation of the Universal Periodic Re Review in the concern to improve the living condition of men to strive for an ideal where all have their place, such as the credit of the ODD 2030, to which the Republic of Djibouti has subscribed as member of the United Nations, and the, the impetus of His Excellency the President of the Republic of EOJ must has already been done and is being done in the National Commission on Human Rights remind us that this struggle, which is the responsibility of every human being to fight at all time, the fight to which the head of state and the Minister of Justice, His Excellency Ali Hassan Bahadon, who is working on the follow-up to the recommendation of the third cycle of the 2018 Universal Periodic Review in relation to the ODD 2030. And yesterday, Tuesday, September 2 and 24, 2019, the conference room of the Ali Sabi Regional Council hosted a historic and unprecedented event under the aegis of the new prefect of the Ali Sabi region, Mr. Musa Adin Migani, and the president of the Regional Council, Mr. Omar Ahmed Waiz, the sponsorship ceremony of 100 school children from CEM Ali Sabi took place. The representative of this diaspora, Mrs. Aisha Webri Asobi, informed that these students will be sponsored book tuition uniform and school supply to university and that this number will increase to 500 students next year. For his part, the prefect of, of Al-Sabih region, Adam Migani, congratulated the Asajog diaspora for this generous and fraternal gesture to help their brother and sister in the region. As part of the contact the new prefect of Ali Sabih region, Mr. Musa Adam Migani held an information and consultation meeting this morning in his office with the various decentralized services in the Ali Sabih region. The president of the regional council, Mr. Omar Ahmed Waiz, also took part in this meeting with the new prefect of the region. During this meeting, each manager briefly reviewed his or her respective missions and gave a presentation of the current state of affairs in his or her departments. And now a strong storm accompanied by heavy rain fell on the town of Buya and devastated everything in his path. There is enormous damage as most of the houses has been completely, completely devastated, including the flaming and magnificent new school. Indeed, the commission composed of sub prefect of Dora, Mr. Abdullah Kamil, the, the representative of the national education, and the cameraman naturally went to the place to establish the damage caused by this terrible storm to really hit the small village in the, this area hard. Thus, it has been reported that the beautiful ex exceptional school built in 2018, based on prefabricated pre buildings which currently houses 223 students supervised by five teachers has been completely destroyed however the flagship school in this area has lost everything the roof toilet veranda and solar panels which remain totally out of use finally it should be noted that decisional storm caused considerable and damage but did not cause injuries or casualty and this is it for this news thank you for watching us and have a wonderful night